Hello and welcome to Ask Mama Amy, a podcast promoting practical advice and resources for strong mothers. I'm your host, Amy Shao, single mom and estate planning attorney and founder of Shao Law. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to have Geisha Monflory today with us. She is the confidence coach for girls. I'm so excited to have her to share with us um, what she does and also her just personal experience as a mom and how uh, she found the courage and just uh, her experience. And I can't wait for her to tell you about all she does. So Geisha, why don't you tell us about yourself? Yes. Thank you so much. First of all, Amy, for having me on. I truly appreciate this. Um, yeah, so like you said, my name is Keisha Montflurry. Um, I am a confidence coach for girls, and I am the founder of two businesses, actually a um, nonprofit, a faith-based nonprofit, and an LLC. And um, both of them has um, encourages our girls to know their worth. One of them, like I said, is faith-based, so it's knowing their worth through Christ. And the other one is making sure that our girls have the healthy confidence needed to be able to make sound decisions with different relationships um, as she gets older. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love the mission of of what you do. And yeah, can you just share a little bit about what was the motivation initially? Yeah, definitely. (laughs) I started this because it's so meaningful. Yes, it definitely goes into the journey of motherhood that I'm in right now. Um, And actually, so a little background, I am a divorced divorced (laughs) parent. Um, So I have three children myself. And coming from that devastating divorce, you know, mine was devastating just like anybody else's. But in the midst of that, instead of, you know, um, instead of victimizing myself and and having that, putting that shame on myself, um, I decided to do something different and um, step up and really take full responsibility for my part in the relationship. Um, And not only that, while I was doing that, making necessary changes to see what was, why was I in a relationship like that in the first place? Why was I okay with making the, the decisions that I made in that relationship and what I need to do to be able to flourish and be the person that I believe, you know, um, you know, I'm a believer in Christ. So I believe that he called me to be. So while I was making those necessary changes, I um, came to the conclusion um, that not only do I need to do this for myself, but I need to do this for my children and I need to do it. I'm in the child development field and I need to do it for the youth that I have, you know, that I hold responsibility to. So, um, so it was an all around journey. So it started with me making sure that I have the tools and the foundation needed so that I don't make the same, um, you know, decisions that I made in the past. And then, you know, making sure that I'm being, a um, a good start for my children and then the other children that I have responsibility to. Wow. So tell us um, about your children. You have, you said you have three kids. Yes. I have. How old are they? Yeah. I have a um, 19 year old, a, um, yes, I had one when I was like three, because you know, (laughs) no, no, no. Um, I have a 19 year old. I have a 12 year old and I have a 13 year old. Um, And the older, the oldest one, he's a boy. Um, So I understand just as a mom, the relationship that I need to have with my son so that he's able to see, you know, women see relationships in a positive light. And also with my daughters also, that's the the main focus of what I do. I'm being a confidence coach for girls. They were, they're the first people that I look at to see how I'm able to serve in the community that I'm able to serve in. Yeah. Were you so, were you in so, uh, somewhat of a similar background before you founded your uh, this whole confidence? Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. So uh, yeah, yeah, my background is actually I have my degree in child human development, mm-hmm. um, and I've been working with the youth and the families for over seventeen years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was a supervisor for a before and after school program, and I loved what I do. I I still to this day. Um, really loved that journey in my life. It taught me a lot. Um, and in the midst of that, like I said, I was married, you know, you know, living the American dream, had, you know, had our house, had our kids doing all that. Um, but it just was not, um, not healthy. 
And knowing the background of what I came from, from human development, you know, just learning from all the way from the womb to adolescence, like just something for myself, I'm like, this is just not right. You know, um, I'm not flourishing in the way that I need to flourish. I'm not, you know, um, I don't want like to say the word happy. I'm not um, fulfilled, you know, in my life right now. And that's when I started to really um, dig in to see what was going on. And at, and act, actually working with the youth that I work with, you start to kind of see it in a different lens. When I start to see why I was making the decisions, I started to really pay attention to the relationships that the kids were having with each other, friendships, different things like that, parent-child relationships, and seeing how I'm able to step in and be that, you know, positive force in their life so that they're able to make those sound decisions. So yes, my background is child development. And I am a big, 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 my per my purpose, my passion has a lot to do with the social emotional development of our youth. Mm -hmm. That That's yeah. so awesome. Now, would you be willing to share um, as you are going through this motherhood mm -hmm. raising these three children yeah. what was the i'm sure there were so many different challenges mm -hmm. maybe in a month it's just not <laughs> yeah. the hardest job in the world <laughs> but if you would be willing to share on this journey yeah. what was this the, the most difficult thing that you had to go through mm -hmm. and share how you were able to kind of come out of it and what was yeah. what was so difficult about that journey yes oh oh man that's a, such i haven't shared this story in at least a few months now and i thought i got over it so if i get emotional just you know bear with me but um coming out of that relationship um i remember specifically um one day um, my daughter was staring at herself in the mirror and she was about six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. And this is how the, the, um, the nonprofit got founded because of the epiphany of this, but she was staring at herself in the mirror and I was asking her, I seen her staring at herself and I'm like, what is she? I wonder what she's thinking. And how old so was she at this she time? She was about six, five or six years old. Oh, okay. She's so really, yeah, young. she was yeah. little. Yeah. So yeah. she was staring at herself and I was staring at her, stared at herself. And I decided to ask her like, what do you see when you look in there? And she literally turned and pointed to me. And I was like, what? Like, I'm not, it wasn't even a proud moment because I wasn't proud of the woman that she was pointing at. So when I came to that realization, like, wait, why am I not proud that she's pointing at me? It just dawned on me like she's the first, I am the first person she sees as to what a healthy woman should look like. Not only spiritually, not only mentally, not only physically, all those things combined. I'm the first person that she sees as to what a healthy, confident woman looks like. So that's when I just, you know, had I had the urgency to get up and do something about it. If not only for myself, like I said, for my children and for other children that I am assigned to, you know, I'm working in this child development field. I am, I'm having to be an example that I'm needing to be for the children in my life. So when I seen that, like I said, it just something opened up and it was just a sense of urgency. So um, along with the divorce, like I said, yes, that was devastating, but that allowed me to be able to rise to be the woman that I'm called to be so that I'm able to make the impact that I need to make in my life, in my children's life and um, the girls that I'm assigned to. Wow. I like almost have tears as you were oh, describing that, yes. that image, that picture, mm -hmm. just seeing your daughter there. Yes. It's almost like she saved you from the situation. Yes. yes. <laughs> and it's so funny because I um, connected with a friend recently and her daughter is around the same age when my daughter, her daughter is like seven years old. And she said, oh my gosh, I've been meaning to contact you because when I heard, she said, I remember that story a long time ago. And she did the same thing to her daughter at this age, just subconsciously. And she said she did the same thing. She pointed to her. So she said, it's something around that age. It has to be where you were really highlighted in your daughter's life as to what a woman should look like. So if she's seeing you and you're not being your full self, you're depressed or whatever the case is, then she's going to model that, you know, and I haven't, you know, I'm, I'm, I have suffered from depression. So I know what that um, looks like. But when we're walking around in that you have, you know, your kids, not only daughters, but your kids that are actually 
um, looking at what's going on and, and visualizing that and actually taking it in. So. Wow. Wow. And so with, with that provided the, the big motivation for you yes. to found the nonprofit. So yes. tell us more about the nonprofit. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. So the nonprofit it started with all that with the nonprofit. And it's like I said, for me, um, as a, as a believer in Christ, it was when I gave my life to the Lord and that happening It almost seems like it happened back to back, but obviously it was time that, you know, time that passed, but um, when I was eight, when I seen that and just decided to make the change, then I decided to do what I needed to do for myself. And then working in child development, um, I decided to create curriculums for our girls to be able to do, or, you know, to be able to practice these skills so that she's able to know how to navigate and develop and create healthy relationships. So as she gets older, then she makes better sound decisions. So the nonprofit is called Abundantly Authentic, and it's for our girls to know their worth through Christ. And I know it's a, you know, it's a large word for our little girls, but I just want them to know that, um, that they are authentic and in such a huge way that we need them. We need their purpose. We need what they are put on this earth here for, what they are on this earth here for. So that is a nonprofit. And then... I, I had no, all of this is, is still a journey right now um, as I'm walking through all this. Um, but I started to, because I was at, at the schools, I decided to pitch the program um, at, you know, different school sites and stuff like that. And um, because the nonprofit is faith-based, I was having a little bit of a, um, of a challenge yeah. um, with the curriculum with that. But, you know, when I really thought about it, I'm like, but we all this, this, what I share with our girls is not just for girls. It's not just for, um, you know, for our little girls, but it's for our women, our men, our boys, our girls. But so I decided, um, to found Handiwork LLC, which is what we do is we specialize in personal development, um, for our school age girls, personal development programs for our school age girls that supports them in having healthy confidence. Cause we're walking around, you know, talking about confident girl or girl boss and different things, but we want to make sure that our girls have the foundation of healthy confidence. So she's not easily um, discouraged or easily getting into these situations that will, um, you know, that's proven to be dangerous, like self-harm, bullying, um, different things like that. And I believe that there's specifically five foundations that we're needing to um, share with our girls in order to make that happen. The five foundations. Yes. Okay. So I'll share the five <laughs> foundations. So number one is allowing them and reminding them that they have a purpose. We all have a purpose here on this earth. Yours is going to look way different than it's going to look different for me. My purpose is to plant the seeds of encouragement into our young girls. And I've created um, books, workbooks, workshops to be able to get this message out. Just like you're doing um, with what you're doing is sharing law information and getting, you know, a strong foundation for our families and moms and different things. Right. So that's number one is purpose. Key number two was self-care. And when I talk about self-care, um, I talk about more on the outside. Um, to, I call it ooh-la-la. The girls really love that word. But it's taking care of our shells. It's making sure that we don't want to just, um, you know, be, a, a, I believe that when we look good, we feel good. So we don't want to be obsessive about the way that we look, but we do want to care about the way that we look. And that's just challenging ourselves to make sure that we're you know, taking care of ourselves, personal grooming ourselves, that we're trying new hairstyles, new maybe lip gloss and different things like that, whatever you're needing to be able to make sure that you are caring for yourself in that way. And then key number three is journey. We're all on a, you know, specific, it's um, different journey. And then I teach them the importance of exercising our bodies and having the desire to want to travel outside of our norms. I believe that when we travel, we see different things, our perspective changes because we get to meet new people, try new foods, um, different things like that. So that's key number three. Number four is health and nutrition does matter. And it's just going outside of your norm, trying new, new things and being mindful with the things that we are putting inside of our bodies. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, key number five is invest. 
And a lot of people think that I'm talking about money and yes, taking care of, you know, of what we have is a part of it, but how are we investing our time? How are we making the time for the people in our lives? How are we giving back to our community? Um, and just, you know, just making sure that they have those foundations. So they're growing up practicing these. And like I said, making wise sound decisions with, with the tools that they have. That's amazing. Now, what are the ages of the uh, girls that you coach? Yeah, so I do. Um, it started off with obviously like the middle school girls that, you know, a lot of people. Um, but my passion really geared towards our younger girls. So it's school age girls. So I have my young girls, which are my elementary school girls. I have my um, middle girls, which are my middle school girls. And then I have my OGs, which are my older girls. Um, but I really, really geared to the elementary school girls because I, I believe that um, from what, I, what I've seen, a lot of programs are geared towards the middle school girls and the older girls. But I just, you know, like I said earlier, social emotional health is super important. And if we are showing our girls what a friend, what a good friend looks like, how to care for herself with those foundations that we talked about, she will be practicing these things. And as she gets older, you won't have to worry as much. We're human beings. We're going to make our mistakes. We're going to do what we're going to do. But you won't ha have to worry as much with the decisions that she's going to make um, for herself and for others in her life. Gotcha. So it's somewhere yeah. between five to 11. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Love that. Now, yes. would you, would you um, share uh, one, some examples of mm -hmm. the things that you do in these curriculum? Yeah, yeah. So um, definitely. So one thing a lot of people ask is like, how can you teach a five-year-old about mm -hmm. healthy confidence? Yeah. So I love this question because <laughs> a lot of it is paying attention. And for us as, you know, as moms, um, of our young kids, our daughters, being aware of the things that's going on in her life. She's going to school, she's connecting with friends, asking her simple questions like, um, you know, not just how was your day today, but kind of digging more into it. Like how, what, how was, you know, how was it in math? How did you like your, your math session today? Um, asking her about her friendships. Why is she, um, you know, why is she best friends with you know, Sue Ann, like why, what is it about Sue Ann that's attracting her to, um, to be her best friend? What are some of the things that they talk about, you know? Um, and you will, our girls, I noticed they really like when you ask questions about them and about their day. What are some of the things, pay attention to the things that she likes to do. Do you notice that she likes to draw? She likes to write, um, you know, to provide her with a journal, provide her with a cute pen. What are some of her favorite colors? What are some of the things that she likes to do and just slowly but surely invest in her in that way? And in the workshops, that's what I do. I focus on her. What are some of the things that she likes to do? Um, I ask her, and it's so funny because a lot of people, we don't get asked these questions a lot. So the girl literally will be stumped when he asks her what about herself. And I remember one girl in particular was like, well, I don't really like to do anything. I like to organize. I'm like, girl, we need you. There is so many people <laughs> out there that we need you to organize files. We need to need you to organize homes. And she took so much pride in that after I was able to affirm her with that. So it just, you know, doing things, investing in them um, piece by piece, listening to them um, and seeing what they're into and making sure that we have the, um, that we take the time to make sure that we're able to invest in them in that way. Wow. That's just yeah. so amazing. Now, how can people get a hold of you or what type of workshops do you offer? Do they have to go through a school or can they contact you directly? Yeah, definitely. You can check me out on my website. It's Keisha Montflurry, and I'm sure you'll share. Yeah, we'll post that in yes. um, um, Keisha Montflurry.com um, or I'm very active on Instagram and Facebook at Confident Keisha. And people ask me, well, why do I name Confident Keisha? It's not because I'm conceited. We're talking about healthy confidence, right? Okay. I'm confident, confidence coach for girls. And then Keisha, just an easy way to find me on social media. <laughs> I like that. I like confident Keisha. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so Keisha, tell us, what is your definition of a strong mom? I really love this question. It's so funny because I'm, I'm, 
I'm a nerd, you know, I'm going to, I used to get called it when I was little and be embarrassed, but no, I embrace my nerdness now. Mm -hmm. But I really went in and looked into the definition of what strong meant. And the definition that stuck to, stuck out to me was um, pulling yourself when you pull, okay, I'm sorry, hold on. Strong means being, oh, where's my, um, my meaning of strong? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I had it all written down. Um, oh, but it, mean, it means to be able to withstand force or pressure. So strong means being able to withstand force or pressure. And when I think of a mom, I think of a nurturer, I think of a protector. Um, so strong mom, um, I had to write it down because I had to get the exact wording that I wanted to use, but being wise in your decision-making. So a strong, mom's me, strong mom means being wise in your decision-making knowing you have great responsibility and managing those responsibilities to the best of your abilities, knowing and accepting support because we can get into this, I'm super mom, but no, we have a village. We just need to open our eyes and accept that. And then balancing. And what I mean by balance for my definition is being present and ready as needed. So um, so that is the definition of a strong mom. Wow, that needs to go into a dictionary. <laughs> I love how extensive <laughs> yes. and Yes, thank you, thank you. I had to, I'm like, I have to share it in this way because um, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to encourage our moms. Very well thought out. Yeah. Now, would you be willing to share some final encouraging words for our local community and our local moms? Yes, um, definitely. One thing that I'm just gonna, um, gonna say is, like I said, with the definition of being a strong mom is like being present and knowing that you have something to offer this world. We all have, like I tell the girls all the time, we all have a purpose. And I believe that our purpose is to serve others. And whatever your purpose is, is gonna look so different than mine. And I just want you to know that we need you. We need your gifts, we need your skills, we need your talents. We need what you have to offer. And I would just um, encourage you and challenge you and challenge you to rise up and be that, um, be, play your part in the community that we need. Awesome. Thank you so much, Keisha. Thank you um, for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you for joining us today on Ask Mama Amy. Head over to AskMamaAmy.com for all the show notes and links you heard in today's episode. You'll also get my free legal tool for you to name legal guardians for your children so that you can leave them with abundant resources to support them and a total peace of mind. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe and leave a review to tell us why. See you next time, mamas.